evacuation of all residents within a one and a half mile radius. That fire happened around midnight. Okay, okay. Our deputies encountered smoke and complained of respiratory irritation. One was taken to a nearby hospital by ambulance and 14 drove themselves to the hospital to be evaluated. At last check, 13 of the 15 deputies had been released by the hospital and the other two were still being checked out. Arkham and company officials and the Harris County Fire Marshal's Office have told us that exposure to smoke from these organic peroxides is similar to standing over a burning campfire. Based on this information, we believe the smoke is a non-toxic irritant. The Fire Marshal's Office plan for the beginning was to allow this fire to burn itself out. Firefighters are taking a defensive posture to prevent it from spreading. Next, we're going to hear from Assistant Chief Royal uh, from the Harris County Fire Marshal's Office. And then after we complete, uh, officials from Arkham will be providing their statement here as well. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, my name is Bob Royal, R-O-Y-A-L-L. I'm the Assistant Chief of Emergency Operations for the Harris County Fire Marshal's Office. The Harris County Hazmat Team is part of my command. A statement that I'd like to share with you is that uh, earlier this week, at approximately 2 a.m. on Tuesday morning, we, uh, the, the uh, county EOC, which was in full operation at level one, received a call for a water rescue at the Arkema plant. Uh, the Crosby Fire Department initiated that rescue. The next morning, or later that morning, somewhere after daylight, and uh, I remember it to be somewhere around 7 or 8 a.m., uh, the members down that were working down at the EOC had a conference call with Arkema uh, corporate offices, and they asked for a complete evacuation of the plant. Shortly after that, an hour or so later, Department of Homeland Security, uh, Infrastructure Protection, uh, contacted myself and uh, Chief Reed from the Harris County Fire Marshal's Office and others. We had an extensive conference call and talked about what was going on out in Arkansas. Since that time, we developed a plan with the Crosby Fire Department, who is the incident commander on this, uh, this incident. And we had decided that we would uh, invoke a safety zone around the plant, which has been done. We established that isolation perimeter at 1.5 mile radius. After we established that, that evacuation zone, the Crosby Fire Department, local law enforcement, and other uh, agencies that are working the flooding event here in Harris County went door to door and evacuated all those uh, that were close to the plant that would leave. Since that time, we have been in a defensive posture holding a perimeter around the facility to make sure that our citizens are safe and that our environment is protected the best we can. This morning, as expected, uh, for all of the research that was done by myself and others, we found out that uh, we had one of the box fans that uh, there was a chemical decomposition, chemical reaction that resulted in a fire at that location. There were a number of small containers that were inside the box fan that did uh, rupture. We had some, heard some popping noise coming from that area, then gray smoke, and then followed by a fire. fire excuse me. It is my understanding that. Uh, Three of the this is one of three of the containers that we had lo they had lost refrigeration on, and so we can expect a similar type of decomposition in those other trailers, maybe even all nine of them. For so a posture, we're holding our perimeter. Our law enforcement partners are holding that perimeter, and uh, at this time, Sheriff, we we'll take any questions. Yeah, real quick, I'm going to just say in, uh, in Spanish, our part of it. Uh, al principio de esta semana, oficiales de la compañía de Arkema eh, nos habían dicho que habían perdido la, la, uh, la posibilidad de continuar de refrigerar los, uh, las químicas que tenía allí, que es un organic peroxide que usan para, para fabricar uh, plásticos, materiales de plástico. Uh, sabíamos que tarde o temprano iban a comenzar a, a echar al fuego. Por eso ayudamos a evacuar a residentes que viven entre una, una y media de, de la fábrica. 
Uh, esta noche pasó la primera eh, incendio. Uh, nuestros oficiales que estaban ahí manteniendo la área uh, encontraron uh, humo y comenzaron a quejarse que estaban respirando como algo como el como el humo. Uh, uno fue llevado a la ambulancia, 14 más uh, ellos mismos manejaron al hospital. Uh, lo más reciente es que de 13 de los 15 ya han sido despedidos del hospital y parecen estar bien y los últimos dos siguen, lo están atendiendo ahí. Uh, los oficiales de Arkema con uh, Harris County, la oficina del Fire Marshal, nos han dicho que ese humo no, no causa mucho peligro y es más o menos como uh, poner humo cuando uno está sobre una parrilla. Uh, entonces, ellos han estado coordinando esto y pensamos que vamos a tomar una postura defensiva donde no tenemos que atacar el incendio y es posible que vamos a escuchar más de estos truenos. Entonces, por eso estamos aquí. Señor, ¿tienes específicas preguntas sobre el incendio? Sí, claro. ¿Puedes ambos explicar los mensajes mixtos? Arkema, en el escrito, se llama dos explosiones. Ustedes parecen que se disputan. ¿Están en la misma página? Creo que el señor Martin va a hablar de eso. Sir, to answer your question, we're on the same page. It's a matter of terminology. Uh, I call it a chemical reaction and an overpressure of the container. Uh, you'll have to ask Arkham about their uh, explanation as far as explosions go. Uh, that's not my business. My business is protecting the citizens and our environment. But speaking of that, that makes it sound like you guys are not coordinating. And I had residents ask me this morning whether you guys are, are talking to each other and, and why why the difference. So they, they we want to know what the danger is. Sir, we are coordinating. We've had conference calls two times a day since this started. And uh, we've had our law enforcement partners in there, us in there, and our industrial liaison from Harris County. We have been cooperating. Uh, you'll have to ask those specific questions about argument. Uh, terminology and statement to them. I'm just telling you what we are doing and what we are involved in in our approach. Hey, Chief, so obviously being in the business that you are, I mean, there are big explosions in life and there are small explosions. I mean, if you go back to chemistry class, you can have one right in front of you on the table, right? So to watch you sort of parse your words this morning, sort of set off, no pun intended, people in the area who were like, what, what is this guy doing, right? So it's an explosion, but I, I don't understand why you guys were sort of so picky with words. Was it a small explosion? I mean, when you look at the aerials and you see the fire that's burning and the damage that's been done, it's clear that it's more than just um, a reaction. You must not have heard me say that containers rupture. Correct, okay. rupture. A, a small pop or a sound of a popping right. sound. Uh, what I don't want, I don't want the public to think that these are massive explosions. Right. We're trying to make sure that our citizens are comfortable in what's going on and that they know the truth. And so with that, these are small container ruptures that may have a sound, excuse me, may have a sound of a pop or something of that nature. It, this is not a massive explosion. Right. Small, okay. small explosion. I mean, you know, That's what you're going to call it. I'm going to call it a container rupture, okay? Got it. How much isobutylene and sulfur dioxide? Pardon me? How much isobutylene and sulfur dioxide? You will need to ask the company that question. When can residents return to their homes? When it's safe. Uh, once uh, we determine as public safety officials it's safe for them to return, we will make sure that that message is conveyed to our, to our citizens. What's the size of the fire? The size of the fire was a part of a 18-wheeler box van front. And what is part it right now? Do you know what the size of the fire is right now? Uh, we had an overflight earlier this morning. We have not been back over it yet, uh, so I don't have an update as far as that. So just one part of one truck? A portion of one truck so far, yes. Okay, when I was speaking to Jeff Carr earlier this morning, he described two railroad cars. <laughs> What's the difference here? A railroad car, depending on the size of, of trucks, a railroad car holds a lot more than a truck. And I'll just kind of give you an inference. Uh, if you will, a tank car is equivalent to, depending on the size of the tank trucks, 10 or 11 or 12 tank trucks. So that kind of gives you depending on the size of the tank truck. Okay, these are not rail These are not rail cars. These are not tank cars. Okay. There are some that are on the railroad that are 2 miles away that have nothing to do with this. They they're on a siding that belong to a different facility. Do you expect to be able to get in there cheap at some point? Like where how high is the water right now and do you think there may be an opportunity to get in there 
and sort of do some work to contain future approaches? Right now the water is still up in the plant. We do not know exactly how deep because we have this evacuation perimeter around it. Uh, that will be a determination by the plant, by our chemo, if they're going to go in and try to do anything. That's not my decision. What do you know about the chemicals uh, that have been released that potentially could be released? What are the potential health effects for your residents? What I know from doing research is these things are going to catch on fire. They're going to burn with intensity. Most of the material is going to be consumed by a very hot fire. Okay? From what I have researched and understand is that the byproducts of that is going to be a black smoke with carbon particles in it. Okay? As far as a liquid flowing from there... Put that into simpler terms though. What does it mean for people's health? What does it mean for people's health? You don't want to stand in smoke, do you? So, it's, it, the sheriff says it's like a campfire. It's hydrocarbons burning. There's a lot of things that's made up of hydrocarbons. So the things burning there are no more dangerous than a campfire? Yeah, I did not say that, sir. The people's health. I mean, tell it's, us what right, the potential right. effects You don't want to inhale smoke, okay? I mean, that's plain and simple. So, it's smoke with carbon particles in it. That's it. That's, that's what I have been... What I have researched and that's what I have discussed. Well, what about with, the plant? I mean, isn't the plant that's producing these chemicals, don't they have any information about what the health effects are? I mean, you're doing research on your own, but there are experts there that are producing this. 